problem land we are in. So um, somebody just asked in the chat room. No, sorry, I forgot to change the panelists. It is Maya, and with me is Sherry. Sherry, say hello. Hello. Hopefully you guys can hear her. She uh, had a little audio pin. So we're in a test phone caller. That would be Sherry Moritz. So welcome to the hip roof, and welcome to How to Twitter 101. Um, this kind of came about because we're doing our open forum. Wait a minute, I'm not showing my screen. Oh, wow. Yeah, go to Vegas for a week and look what happens. <laughs> okay, that's better. Um, anyway, this came up because last week in Las Vegas, I asked for a lot of feedback after the sessions, and people want the basics. They want to learn. Now, we probably all have Twitter accounts, but you know, we'll get into some questions and tips and tricks that I use and Sherry uses later on as far as applications and much more as far as metrics for judging interactions. I love clout. I don't know about you, Sherry, but and I don't love them just because they send me things. I love them because I've used them for over two years to judge my interactions and see if I'm kind of dropping the ball in any aspect of my Twitter um, interactions. And persona, I guess, is what it's become. Do you use clout, Sherry? Um, I do, and I use it actually to judge all of my social media interactions on uh, Facebook and Twitter. So I'm just you know, I, would, I would love them even more if they sent me something, though. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I shouldn't tell you what I've gotten from them so far. <laughs> I know, right? All I want is to take my kids to a movie. Come on, people. <laughs> oh man, Sherry, I didn't respond to the last few movie important. requests. You know what, Sherry, the next movie request I get, I will send to you, because the last one I got while I was in Vegas, I couldn't go. So, But hey, guys, you know, being active on Twitter does pay off. <laughs> you get neat stuff from cloud, but it's all marketing. It's, it's fun, and it's always good if you can help a cause. So anyway, how to Twitter 101. Now, I'm going to be toggling back and forth between the browser and the presentation. So... Um, we will, you know, just bear with me while we do that back and forth. And Maria is asking if we can review how we interpret clout and apply what it tells us. We will definitely do that a little bit later on, so I'm going to hold your question. We're going to step through the basics, and I mean basics. So let us begin. All right, so first of all, our how-to webinars. Every week we'll have a different how-to, learning a variety of platforms or topics. We could have a cloud how-to. If you want to learn something, suggest it. And if you're watching this as a recording in the archives in the forum, if you have any questions, just post it under the webinar um, archive. So, and I know we have some guests that are not inside the HIP roof right now, so we hope you guys will come inside and visit. And it's a month-to-month, -month, no contract, so check it out. Um, so that is the theory on this how-to here. For this webinar, questions will be taken through the webinar panel on your screen. To talk, use the chat, please, if you'd like. Uh, the webinar will be recorded if you miss anything. And if questions not answered, you can also post in the forum directly under the post for the webinar. If you are not a member of the Approve, you can post your question on our Facebook page, um, facebook.com slash the HIPROOF. And if you want to hashtag anything, please hashtag it THR. So, off and running. Today's goals. Oh, crud. I thought I'd pull the old slide out. Okay, let's get that. <laughs> What's Twitter? Um, I think a lot of people would answer that very differently, and I won't go into what Mike Ferry's response would be. But um, Twitter's a social media platform with short messages of 140 characters or less. And it kind of started as the concept of microblogging, which is where everybody kind of gets that, what are you doing now? And the question has evolved on the Twitter, Twitter screen. I'm trying to remember what was, the, what was it, what are you doing now? Was that the first question, Sherry? And I think it moved to what's happening or, yeah. So it, the, the original question has kind of changed and it's evolved. And it used to be that you could go back into your history and see all the way back to your first tweet. That's not so much possible now. I don't even, the last time I checked and tried to scroll back, they were only going back a month, and somebody told me they're only going back about two weeks now. But that doesn't mean it's lost because Google and the other spiders are always crawling it. Um, so it's really kind of become a worldwide instant messenger is what I would call it at this point in time. 
um, and you have the immediate communications have led to citizen reporters. And I was actually talking to Jessica Northy about that yesterday. The problem is that, guys, when you witness things or you hear things, we do have responsibility to, to verify information before we potentially spread it because it can be dangerous. It can be a big problem if we're spreading inaccurate information. So try to find ways to verify information before you put it out there because it could go viral, and especially if it's um, I think that the example Jessica used was the um, congresswoman in Arizona when she was shot, that somebody had reported that she had died and her husband was listening to the news and some report through Twitter and so on and so forth. And um, that was a little devastating for him to hear on an airplane. So, you know, just the kind of information that can spread very quickly. So just try to be responsible too. Um, well, people so, are getting oh, killed off on Twitter every day. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes it's fun and a joke, but sometimes, you know, we got to think about the repercussions and the problems that can happen in in the news. And it's a great it's a great channel if you look at what happened in Haiti with the earthquake, New Zealand, and now Japan. What's going on? And what happened in Iran? And you know, Egypt, it's just, it's a great channel that really can't be shut down for people to communicate. And all of us that watched the plane, was it two years ago, like today, the plane in the Hudson, when Sully Sullenberg, what was his name, landed the plane, and one of the first messages was Twitter. So, you know, it, it is a conversation. It's an open channel and searchable without the extra C quickly indexed by the search spider. So it's great. I and mean, that's the one thing I always compare it to. Twitter is, well, I'll use the swimming analogy because I'm sure nobody's heard that at this point in time, but no, I'll go to that later. But I look at Twitter and I say that this is sort of the land for the voyeurs and the exhibitionists. It is the traffic accident we all slow down to look at, even when we're not going to move our head and we just glance our eyes to the side. You know, it's, it's watching those moments those celebrity mishaps, like, I don't know, Charlie Sheen? <laughs> like, it, you got to, it's, yeah, the time sucks. So you got to be careful. So why tweet? Oh, why do you tweet, Sherry? Oh, she's probably yelling at her daughter. Okay. Why tweet? I'm Twitter here. No, I'm okay. here. I, had, I couldn't get it off mute. I just didn't want to eat up the Smurfs in the background. Um, yeah, I tweet really to communicate with people, um, and I can I do it to get answers to a lot of things. If I wanted to talk to Zillow, if I want to talk to Trulia, if I want to talk to you, if I want to talk to Gina, if I'm talking to a woman right now who's over in Tokyo and has a three-year-old daughter, I just met her randomly because she used the hashtag Pray for Japan, and one day I clicked to see who was, you know, talking about it. And we've been conversing every single day, so I use it to, you know, network, talk to people, get information. When my blog gets broken, I just, you know, type in capital words, help. You know, <laughs> Jeremy Blanton comes running, who finds me somebody, who finds me somebody, you know. Absolutely. So I use it really, you know, as, as a multi-purpose tool to communicate with whoever I need it or, you know, want to talk to at the time. It's crowdsourcing, which is always highlighted at the bottom. Oh, go back. Sorry. What? Oh, where's this thing going? <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. Okay. Um, it's crowdsourcing. It's it's searchable. It, it, the, I mean, I think the crowdsourcing is the most beautiful and powerful of it because you, like you said, Sherry, you say help and people find it. Now, you know, it's easy for us when we've been doing it this long because we have people listening. But when you first start out, it can be kind of a lonely place. So we're going to talk about building, following, and how you find people. And that's what the Twitter search is for. It's a really powerful search. And you can easily build connections and community. Trust is inherent on Twitter. I think that unless you're given a reason not to trust somebody, we believe everybody is genuine and giving us information at face value. Either that or I'm completely naive and I just need to stop believing in humanity. 
but <laughs> well, you know, I I want to address that because you know there. If we're talking back to the basics, I mean, I think you and I and a lot of people have gotten far enough into Twitter that we do trust people. But most of my friends are not on Twitter, and I think people who are new to it are a little skeptical. Like, who are these people? Is that lady you're really talking? I mean, I've had three of my friends say, well, how do you know that lady's really in Japan and she really has a three-year-old? I don't know. Do I? I mean, really? I mean, Well, you, you know, know but, and, but that's the history of the Internet, and that's the history of communications on the Internet, because that's where it was born from. The bulletin board systems where people created new identities. So now the question is, everybody's skeptical. Is that really who they say they are? Well, it's not like you're giving them money. And if they aren't who they are, then what damage is done? And why would somebody reach out like that when that's one of their only channel? You know, you just have to assume it's the truth. And what? Well, and then also assume that people actually kind of do care what you're saying because I know a lot of agents who say, well, nobody's going to care what I have to say or care that I'm a real estate agent or care that I'm tweeting listings. And it does take a while for people to, it's one of those back to you got to get involved and show you care well, before they do if, care. But if that's all you do, though, nobody is going to care and nobody's going to listen and they're going to stop noticing you. So <laughs> it's why you got to be a human being first. Right, right. I just think that a lot of us have learned that, you know, already. But a lot of the people who I've talked to who are new to it are still grasping that concept. Which that, is exactly you know, why we need to, to do this. In. Yeah, and that's why we need to do this. We need to be taken back down to the basics. We need people to ask us questions, and that was one of the things that happened in Las Vegas. I was standing up there, and you don't have to sell us on social media. And she's like, "We want to know how to do it." And then somebody else, it might have been Deborah Eleven. Um, came up and said, you know, well, tell us what you do. And that was kind of it. And, of course, I can't get back my pointer here. All right. So, anyway, the hashtags allow simple categorization. And we have somebody saying, where's the chat on Hip Roof? Um, I will get to that later. Um, easily build connections community, great tool for sharing information. I think that's what's really require, you know, really the best part of it. And then also people. It doesn't require an instant reply. It's one of those things that you have to, especially if you're in real estate, schedule the time and stick to the schedule. It doesn't just because somebody tweets you doesn't mean you have to reply to it that very instant. If you need to reach somebody instantaneously, use the telephone whether it's a cell phone, landline, whatever. That's the best way to do it. OK? Of course, this highlighter. Ooh. All right, Twitter is forever. Think before you tweet. Um, I think that it's, it's important to plan and to know and to kind of think about the consequences of things you say. If you're in a bad mood, that might not be the right time to necessarily say something. And also, if you're in a bad mood, depending on what others are saying, you could read something wrong. So always remember, it's type. There's no inflection. There's no intonation. That's why we have emoticons or smileys. Be concise. It's 140 characters. Yes, you can do twit longer. Yes, there are all these other things you can do. But in reality, 110 characters or less, ideally, so you have the power of the retweet. And we'll talk about retweets and how to do those as well, because some people seem to have a hard time with hashtags, the at sign, and the retweet, and the best function of it. And for us, it's, it's second nature. So you know, we need to kind of figure out how to um, bring that to you guys. And remember always, you are a real estate agent, so wear the hat no matter where you are and no matter what time. And, oh, most important, and Sherry would agree, promote others. Right? <laughs> She's like, mute, mute, you did it to me again. <laughs> All right, so it looks easy. Here's the one thing that I hear more often. It looks easy. It's not easy. You have to be patient. There are no shortcuts to building a following, building a community, and making connections. You have to spend the time finding people to follow, hoping they follow you back, interacting, searching, and doing all those things. It's a much bigger space than when I joined and when Sherry joined. So there's a lot more people to connect with. But it's also a lot easier to get lost in the flow because the stream is moving very quickly. Um, social climbing, bad, 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 bad. There are people that come in, and I guess 
probably because I've been there for as long as I have, and Sherry would probably agree too, you can tell who those people are when they have very specific goals of connecting with the influencers, um, you know, the, the really high-ranking folks, the knowledgeable, the experienced, the people that we all kind of, you know, know of but don't necessarily know. And when you see those people that are just winding their way up a ladder to make a connection, it's obvious to most people. And I think the most important thing is be genuine. Meet people for people and everything else will happen. Because the whole point of it is if you're a good person, if you're nice, if you share, if you promote others, then the same thing will happen to you too. So it's really more of a selfless community, I think, than a selfish community. And I think that when people come in and they have ulterior motives or they have preconceived notions of what they want to do, it becomes obvious. So, you know, just try to be genuine, be kind to everybody, share, promote, connect people. That's the greatest thing. If, if you guys aren't following Kate TV, and it's C-A-T-E TV, you should. Kate is like an amazing connector. If she knows you and she wants to know you, and she knows someone else that you should know because there's something in common. She like collects people, but she's nice. She's super nice. She will put you in touch with somebody. And I've seen her do it in a room at the 140 conference last April. She literally grabbed someone and dragged them across the room and said they had to meet someone else. And that is probably one of those moments that's just seared into my brain because I thought it was just so great. And that's what it's all about. You make the connection online, and then you take it to the face-to-face. Clout as a metric. We'll get more into that in a little bit. But in general, clout is a really good way to check where you stand and use the, the scores there. So I'm going to rely upon Sherry to remind me to come back to that. So let's get going here. Creating an account. Now, for some reason, my pointer is stuck on this stupid little highlighter. And let's get our Twitter screen. OK. So creating an account. First of all, we all know Twitter.com. OK. You want to click on the sign up. Now, first of all, you need an email address. If you have an email address that's already associated with a Twitter account, you cannot use it again. So I'm trying to remember what account I created for this. I actually did one in Shantae's name. So I will say Shantae Haynes. All right. The username would be THR Shantae. Now, I'm breaking a rule right there right now because I used an underscore. Okay, but that's fine. I will give her, and here you go. This is where the email address comes in. Um, yeah, you can let others find you by email. That's a fine thing to do. That's actually helpful because as more people come on and it connects through the OAuth to other utilities to check your address book, it's a good way to connect with people you already know from other social platforms or work if you want to. All right, this email is. Uh, I believe. OK, so she'll get a confirmation. We read the terms of service, don't we? Everybody reads the terms of service, every single word of it. See, I'm amazing at speed reading. I want the inside scoop. Awesome. That will give you updates, information, all good to have. So create account. And there you are. OK. So that was the first step, and why is the webinar missed? There you are. There you are. Um, <laughs> OK. What you guys are asking questions. I'm going to take a peek at the questions here. Who is it what cab? I'm not sure. Samantha's asking a question. Um, and a cloud score of 28, is it not so great? Rob's asking. Don't worry about it. Um, you could do better. You could do worse. But we'll we'll show you some tips about it. <laughs> It'll be OK. No, don't be upset. Now Rob's upset. I'm getting a little frowny face. All right, does anybody have any questions here about how we just created our accounts? Because I think that we've all pretty much got that. Um, so now Twitter takes you to these lovely little machinations here of, hey, uh, Oh, Kate TV. I'm sorry. Who's this woman? Kate TV. Let me put that in there for you guys. I'm sorry. That was that was 
I'm reading questions, so I'll, I'll get back to that again. I'm sorry. That was Samantha asking, who is it? And I didn't realize it's Kate TV. So check her out. Follow her. Tell her I sent you. And um, yeah, she'll uh, probably no. Anyway. OK, so the next step is finding friends. They're going to suggest people to you. And that's a good way to start to see if there's any topics of conversation you want. Oh, check that out. There's my friend Cecily. OK? Cecily's awesome. She's a mommy blogger in the Philadelphia area, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm really impressed. So, But you scroll through and look for things, news, politics, staff picks, um, celebrities, technology. There's tons of things to look at. So you can pick somebody from there, or you can skip the next step, and you can go to friends. And this is where it connects to a variety of accounts and pulls people in. See, LinkedIn, I need to do that. I didn't even realize they were doing that. So you could go to LinkedIn. You can connect and bring everybody in. So, And there we go. And they want us to follow the first 10 accounts. There we go. This is the home page now. So usually we need to do a verification here. And I'm looking for it. I'm going to check on the email account that we made. So I recommend Gmail to control. It's there at the top. Is it? Yeah. All right. It was right Thanks. up. Yeah. It's oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, thank you, darling. Yeah. I'm just a little bit awake. Uh, <laughs> go back. What email did you have? Teach our Shante. All right. I don't even know what password I gave her. How's the foot? Um, it, it hurts, but I'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you for asking. That was Maria. I rolled a 90-gallon trash can onto my foot on Friday. It takes skill, especially when you're on a business call trying to negotiate something. That was great. I'm not going to scream profanities. I'm just going to act like nothing happened. And I don't see an email here yet from Twitter. which could just hold us all up. That's delightful. Up oh, there we are. See, they lied. They said they sent it. All right. Yay, account confirmed. Who's excited? All right. <laughs> Let me get rid of this little webinar screen. OK, I'm so glad that you've done this. OK, I still need to confirm my email. Um, all right, then. Thanks, Twitter. You're playing nicely. Let's get rid of that. OK. All right, so we've created the account. Now, here's a little problem. The first thing I look for when people follow me and I look to follow them back is, Sherry, what do I look for? Come on, you know it. I look for interaction and engagement, and I bet you do, too. Well, I do look for that, but the first thing before I even look at that is I like to see if they have a picture and a bio. A profile, yeah. Yo, you yeah, got it, baby. Eggs. <laughs> mm -mm, I don't follow eggs. Well, it used to be Tweety Birds. Ladies and gentlemen, the very, very first thing you do before you even tweet, before you find people, is you go to the drop-down menu. And if you're using old Twitter, um, I can show you that later, but most of you probably aren't. I like old Twitter. Go to your settings. Hey, check it out. Ooh, look. You can set your time zone. No, we're not in Keto or Quato or whatever. <laughs> we want to add a location. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not add location to your tweets. Why? Security reasons. OK? Please, 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 please. Um, show photos and videos from everyone. This is interesting. This is relatively new, Tweet Media. Um, so yeah, I, I would just not click that, because that's going to be a lot of stuff coming through, especially on a mobile device. So we keep going. Protect my tweets. OK, can I ask one question here? Well, this is funny, because actually I have a protected account, too. Who exactly would? be protecting their Twitter account if they're a real estate agent trying to attract clients. And it amazes me the number of the ones I see out there. Who are you talking to? 
And if you're not going to just talk to the general public, then don't be on Twitter. Go to Facebook. Because all you're doing is connecting with people you know. The whole point of Twitter really is that you're meeting new people. I mean, think of it as the first day of school. You're going to meet all your new friends. This is the first day of school every day. Right, Sherry? Or don't go out and follow people who, and then have protected accounts. I've had several people doing, real estate agents doing that in the last couple of weeks after all of the large company conferences. They learned how to use Twitter. They went and they followed some people, but they have a protected account. And it's like, well, thanks. Why are you following me? What you <laughs> well, Maria brings up the point is they're using Twitter as an instant messenger. That's fine. But the whole point is if you're a real estate agent, first of all, hi. There are instant messengers, things like Gchat and Yahoo and AOL. So use those. You know, you don't need to take up our bandwidth on Twitter. There's no reason to have a private conversation on Twitter. I mean, okay, yes, it's a group conversation, but anyway. Um, so, and somebody put Andrea points out in the bio. So many don't put what area they cover. How do I know if there are someone from an area I need to refer? Well, yeah, we'll get to that. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'm not saying don't put your location. I'm saying don't. Tweet your location with this little one here. Add a location to your tweets. That's very different. So, um, by the way, I do have a protected account, but that's just because it's a small group of people, and there are certain things I know that I want to scream at times, and I put it there because I doesn't necessarily need everybody to hear me scream. All right, so if you want to use HTTPS for security, if you want to protect your tweets, this is where you set all of these things up. So we change the time. We're going to save it. Save it, save it, save it. It wants the password. Hmm. Come on. All right, then. And it'll tell you. OK, so you can change your password here. You can activate your mobile device here. I like Twitter with text. And a lot of you might notice that I use Twitter via text a lot. It's just because I can type fast. Um, the one thing I like about text and Twitter is that you can go, and if you see the little on off here, these are on profiles too. You can receive updates of some people via text. So if there's particular people, maybe your top competitor in your market is there, and you want to watch what they're doing, get those alerts via text. Now make sure you have unlimited text messages because, wow, they go high, they go fast. You also now will get any app replies of people that you follow via text messaging. So, yes, okay, Maria's pointing out HTTPS is a secure login. It is. I'm, I use an application. I usually don't go through the Twitter show the Twitter. Did you hear that, Sherry? So anyway, so text. What you would do here is you'd put your phone number in, and then you'd start it. It would send a verification text to your phone, and you'd send the code back. Okay? Notifications. It defaults to all of these things. New follower emails. Direct text emails, or direct message emails, and email newsletters. I, um, I have the new follower emails turned off on my account because there's just too many. So, you know, it's nice to know because you want to follow people back, but I just I just go back and look and find them. Here is the essential part that we were talking about before. And this right here, Andrea, will answer your question. Location. All right. Choose a file. Ugh, now you guys will have to see all my pictures. Hey, let's give Shantae. I don't know. I don't think I have a picture of Shantae here. Let's see, let's see. I guess I will. I have no idea. Let's just, we'll give, you know what, we'll make Ben, we'll put Ben Kinney's picture on for Shante. I do have photos for her, they're just not here. Although it might not go for it because it has to be 7K. 700K max, people. And if they don't come up, you'll know why. So here's, you have her name. Now, Shante is in Washington, D.C. Oops. All right, so her website. OK. And then bio. OK. 
Okay, broker, vocation, she loves to learn and loves her market. The location's right here, Washington, D.C., so people will know, and it's searchable. You have 160 characters. Now, you can have a lot more fun with it. I'm just trying to write one really quickly. All right, so now the file is uploading. She'll have Ben's face. Yay, he'll love that one. I'm going to start tweeting. I'm going to make you fake Ben, Kenny. So that's what you've got there. So now this is, this is the first essential thing you have to do. If you haven't done this, if you don't have your location, you know, go fix that, <laughs> please. Design. They have all their fun designs. You can do what I did with Twilk. their sites and design your own, change the colors. And, and that's a fun thing. You can check out the themes and change any of the colors within them if you want to. So let's just give her this fun little honeycomb. And um, yeah, see, like changing the design colors, you can come in here and you can click on it. And you just scroll up and down for whatever you want to use. And there, they are hexadecimal colors. So for those of you that know, the web color palette. You can put any of the hex colors you want in here. So let's say should be black. Isn't it? Yeah. So there you go. All right. So I'm going to cancel that. And we'll just go back to regular. Okay. Now you can go ahead now that we've got the profile. So you see here? That's important. Take a look at your profile now by clicking on the profile. And you can see, or you should see, here you go, who you are, your bio, and your URL. So you've got your name, location. This is what others will see right up here. So that's how you can check it. Now we're a big, sad person right now. <laughs> At this point in time, I'm going to log out of this account, and I'm going to switch into a different account, because I want to show you guys an account that has a little more substance. Um, the heck is the password? No, not like mine. <laughs> but thanks. Uh, all right, like mine. Oh, goodness. Glad you guys can't, like, steal my password. Yeah, Rob's like, like yours. Hey, look, I got it wrong. Somebody changed my password. I've been hacked. I'm kidding. All right, now they're going to get to see the secret sauce. You guys can't see my dark messages, though. Ha ha. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so there, there's my Twilk background. Where do you get it? Go to twilk.com, and then it looks at the people you've interacted with the last few weeks or something. And yes, I admit this is a really long time ago, but I just thought it was hysterical that I had Margie Kleeman, Jeff Pulver, and Chris Brogan, and then Teresa Boardman all in a row. I thought that was pretty cool. So I kept that. Um, so, oh look, it's the professional one, and Mr. Jeffers right there next to John Lauber, and there's unmarketing. Okay, enough. Look, 20 new tweets. All right, so you go to your profile, and that's where you can see what your description is. So here's mine. Now notice I get a double whammy. I get the Delaware and the Philly. People like that. They think it's funny. <clears throat> so it works. Profiles, so on and so forth. Tweets, yeah, I've got a couple of those. Followers. Now, for oops, my list. Fear fun profile following. Yes, followers. One of the things you want to do is I already have people that I'm following, obviously. Now the other account we didn't have anything. So let's go hit up. Wait a minute, do we have multiple logins here? Yeah, we do. Hold on. Okay. Let's hit up the Twitter search here. And I want to find people. So there's two ways to do it. You can just search by topic. You could search by statements. Let me try a fun one and see what happens. Uh, oh, well, look at that. I think my parents are seriously considering moving to Philly. Hey, I'm a real estate agent. I'm licensed in Pennsylvania. I'm on it. Now, it's her parents. I, I'm not necessarily interested in a child, and I don't know the age of this person, so I'm not going to follow them. But this is an interesting thing you can do for any market. Searching things like this on the search, that's Twitter.com, to find people. I apologize if there's anything in here that might not be appropriate. 
So somebody's never moving to Philly. So let's say you find somebody who's really interesting and say, I go into Philly or whatever. You can just mouse over and, <clears throat> okay, fine, go back, excuse me. Mouse over, click on follow, okay? And again, the OAuth seems messed up on this because every time I do it, it keeps connecting. So they need to fix it. But that makes it easy to search. And then you can just follow people based on that. Now, hashtags. For instance, the ERA IBC just happened. So I can search their hashtag as a real estate agent. I might want to connect with other real estate agents. So I can mouse over here. I can click follow. And there, right there is the little application that will toggle on and off whether I get notifications of her tweets to my cell phone. That's fun, isn't it? So Serengeti, there's Stefan Swainpool. Oh, I follow already. There's Hip Roof. I think I follow them. There's Mr. Jeffers. And there's Miss Andrea. So see, Realtor, PR, lots of good stuff. And, you know, finding local hashtags, like where I live in Delaware, we use NetDE hashtag, and that's our local community. Connecting and finding your local community is essential. Serving and promoting your local community is essential. So, for instance, <laughs> Mr. Graves, I think it's Michael Graves, is it? I believe, yeah. He's the president of the YMCA of Delaware. I am actually wearing my volunteer t-shirt right now because I'm fundraising for the Strong Kids campaign. And if I see this, I will retweet it. So, But it doesn't give me the retweet option right here, but you can uh, do that. How do you find a hashtag for your community, Maria asks. Well, actually, I helped create it with a couple of people. Actually, somebody just created Network Delaware, and it became Network DE, and everybody um, kind of adopted it. So, you know, you guys could be Network CT, I think, because you're, I think you're in Connecticut, Maria, um, or anything local for your town. Um, get involved in the local community. What we do is, in Delaware, you know, three counties, so, <laughs> and we'll figure it out. So, um, but, you know, just, just start doing something and promote it to others. Make a community event to tell others about it and tr teach them. Send out business cards, or I'm not, postcards. I'm doing a lot of talking, Sherry. You should be talking, too. Um, so that's some of the ways. And it says, Samantha's asking, how do you scroll through all the spam? I see you have a few spammy people. I did it all wrong when I first started because I was following everyone I could. I realized that I need to be more on purpose. Well, you know what? <clears throat> it gets to the point in time where it gets to be too much no matter what. And when you are looking it on the web, that's too much. I don't use this. I rarely come here. This is one of the few things I would come here for. Create a list. And I want to show you guys that, and then I will show you exactly how you keep it going, OK? I'm going to make the hip roof. Members of our community. All right? And I'm going to make it public. So I can share it with everybody. Lists are great because now as you have so many people, Samantha, you can make lists so it's easier to see who's saying what and what's going on. Now, I did not use lists forever because originally I thought I would offend somebody by leaving them off of a list. But then it's changed. So I've got my little circle. I've got my learned real estate. Now I've got my hip roof. And I don't know why the other two aren't highlighted. But anyway, so. How would I do that? How would I find somebody to put on the list? I would probably, for instance, well, I guess, yeah, Maria, I'll search you. Dun, dun, dun. People. There she is. OK. Now, I can add her to this list right there. Now I've made a list, and I can go and look at that list at any point in time. And as I add, so if I want to see what everybody who's a member on the hip roof is saying, I can go right to that list and look at it. Now, how do I, first of all, I don't care who follows me. I never have, never will. It's who am I following? 
and that's what I care. But there's a point in time too where I don't really watch that too much um, because it's it's sort of it's too big and you can't. So I kind of use an application, and this is you know Twitter search is essential for finding people, following people back. I guess let me step before I go there. Let me go to my followers list for you guys for a minute. All right. Most of the people are following, but occasionally I'll come in here and look and see who am I not following. Slim Body Diet Joan, not going to follow. I have no interest in losing weight. Aria Watch Sales, already following. Hey, look, Ego Tan, he's <laughs> in our webinar. Um, but student, brother, nephew, up here, cousin, friend, internet marketer, entrepreneur. OK, I might go check out their page and see what else they're saying. And I should follow him. Wait a minute. Sorry, Ego. I'm following you now. Or is it I go? It was I go. Um, so anyway, so don't follow back, especially if somebody interacts with you. That's my rule. If somebody says something to you, interacts with you, follow them back. So well, and that makes a point really quick too, is that he just got two followers in the last two minutes between the two of us because he tweeted about us. So we both found mm -hmm. him, and he ended up with two people. We now know him by name. We know him by his tweets, and he's in the webinar too. Right. That's right. Yep. And that's my point is that now he's going to stand out. We're going to remember him, and so now via Twitter, he's gotten to, you know meet two new people who are going to be watching out for his tweets and that he can remind us how he met us and that's how you... Oh, I don't think we're going to forget him and also he is going to be immortalized in the webinar. Now here's another example. Mom, wife of firefighter, realtor in San Francisco, East Bay. And protected. So you don't want people to know the market information you're sharing. Doesn't make sense to me, just saying. So, you know, there's, I've got to do this because I know I have a lot of people from the, the Cobalt Banker event. Um, you know, but did you go through and you look at that, like, you know, here's a guy, he's a kidney transplant receive, recipient, scuba diver. You know, that's like a neat person right there. You just kind of look for things. You go, okay, they sound neat. They sound like a person. When you have pictures that look a little inappropriate, I'm going to go with not so fabulous. So, you know, be selective. You can always unfollow somebody. And oh gosh, please don't click on the things that tell you who unfollowed you. Who cares? I hate that. Oh, see, he did. Is there a hashtag we use for the webinar? Yes, THR, the hip roof. Sorry, that was a while ago he tweeted that. Okay. So here, Samantha, to help, um, I use Hootsuite now. I also use TweetDeck. But these are great social tools because they allow you to sort of have your home feed here, your app mentions, and then you can have any of these searches you want as they go across. You also have your Facebook pages. Now, I upgraded to the Pro at $5.99 a month because I can manage a lot more stuff on here. And I'm not the only one on the HipProof account, by the way. Sherry and Shantae are also on there. But the HipProof Facebook page. Since Facebook changed that you can post as the pages, it makes life so much easier. So this is great because this is just sort of the one ring. And here's the secret. And I have mocked Chris Brogan since he said he started scheduling tweets on Hootsuite. But I will admit I am now doing that for certain things. For hip proof, if I'm in an event, want to promote a webinar, promote somebody else's book, whatever the case may be. You can schedule a message to go out at a later time. So seriously, I think that is so powerful um, because you can just, you know, you can do a lot, you can share a lot. If you have a blog and you want to share it, but you're going to be out on the road, or someone you know has written a blog and you really like it and you want to repeat it in a time frame you're not going to be there. If it's 2 in the morning at your time and it's 6 where all your friends are, well then, you're sleeping, post it via Hootsuite. Okay? There you go. She said it. And TweetDeck, here's a... Let me open this up. This probably needs an update because I haven't touched it in so long. And we'll see if it goes. What do you use, Sherry? You like uh, Hootsuite? I use Hootsuite exclusively. I use it on my iPhone and on my computer and the iPad. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> not going to talk about the iPhone. I like Uber Twitter, but um, I'm seriously waiting to find out if there's the Epic 2 coming, if it's coming. 
Um, I'm gone. I'm gone. Oh, look. We got a thank you. Awesome. I'm going to retweet it. Ah, uh, retweeting before I forget. Everybody, everybody retweets. Be sure to put the RT ahead of it and make sure you mention the person's name unless you use one of those via or whatever it does. But, you know, um, it is the best to at least try to respect the original message. and. Honestly, if I have to edit your tweet too much to retweet it, it's not going to happen, right? It's if it's too much effort, I'm moving on to the next thing, and I'll promote someone else. So yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know what you said. Okay. Clout. You guys asked about clout. Ah, the beautiful, beautiful, and powerful clout. So here's what you do. You put in your name. And I haven't done this in a few days or weeks. View your clout influence summary. I once had a clout score of like 72. That was pretty nice. Um, connect with Facebook. Ooh, help us increase your clout. All right, so this is telling you your clout score, your true reach, your amplification, and your network. So looking at this total list that you're a member of, Facebook, tweets, whatever. Over a thousand lists, those are the people that list you, total retweets. And when you click on them, total number of times you've been retweeted, um, unique retweeters, unique mentioners, you know, all these different things. It does give you a score analysis so that if you want to get more information, message retweeted, total number of retweets for a specific message. So that's my biggest reach right there. And this is interesting to me because you move between different spaces. You get the, the, the little boxes that tell you. So I'm, I'm falling into thought leader. And down here, I see, tells you exactly who my friends are. So that's you. And then you mouse over, tells you who they are and so on and so forth, so forth. Now, I love Twits McGee. She's awesome. I like Christy. And I like the Borg. And I like Neat Freak. And I like Dana. But honestly, these are old, really old. I, I have I'm not interacted probably with Christy in months. And these are people, for the most part, that I was interacting with at a high velocity 18 to 20 months ago, including those that it says I'm influenced by. So I think that's kind of funny. Andrea, I definitely interact with a lot. But the rest of them, so this is the one fault I have and problem I have with clout. And that is that they don't seem to update these a lot. As many times as I've asked them and told them, they don't. So topic summaries, like here, most influential topics. What are you talking about? Where do you have the most influence? And then the score analysis also here. And Sherry and I like to compete with each other. Right, Sherry? Sure. So, I'm never going to catch up to your score. What? <laughs> I'm never going to catch up to your score. I can't say that much. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, oh, shut up. It has nothing to do with that. It's just, <laughs> the way I use this is interactions, OK? And here's the reality. I've been so busy with a bunch of other things lately that I haven't had the time to dedicate to responding to mentions and everything else. So this is exactly what I do. By looking at the cloud score and seeing where it was, I realized that I haven't been responding as much as I could. Yes, it was hard at the conference. Yes, it was hard with working in real estate, selling houses, showing houses. That's my job. So sometimes Twitter falls behind. But it used to be that I made a concerted effort to reply to everybody who sent me a message. And that's where the cloud score primarily comes from, as well as providing good content and information. Now, we can break down the cloud score completely and how it works another time, because it's, it's actually pretty in-depth. Um, let's, you know, if we want to do another analysis, let me think of somebody. Let's use my friend Jessica Northday as an example. See if it goes. There you go. Jessica's got a 77. Okay. She is all social all the time. She's also got like 120,000 followers or something like that. 
and now she's going on Facebook. She's integrated her Facebook here. Jessica Northey is curator. She likes to share information. Her influencers and those she is influenced by. It's interesting. I oh, used to interact with this person. Um, so, you know, it gives you some idea of what they're about and what they do. Now, Jessica's pretty cool. If you guys don't know her, you should definitely meet her. She's a doll. So sweet. Um, and, you know, it used to say that celebrities got 80s and things like that. And it used to be based on interaction solely. And so, you know, not so much anymore. Um, some of it has to do with who they're following. So here we go, for instance. Mrs. Kutcher. Oh, what did I just do? I went to Jessica's page? Okay, whatever. All right, so here's Jessica's page. Okay, she's got 129,000 followers. So y'all should follow Jess. Tell her I sent you. All right, so Mrs. Kutcher. We should get the Twitter score from that if it wants to. Hmm. But Cloud is interesting because what they're doing is they're trying to find the heavy influencers. So see, Demi Moore's got a 70. Her reach is huge. But Jessica kicks her butt and score because Jessica responds to people. It's about the interactions. Now, I don't want to necessarily call anybody out, but I'm kind of going to in that I want to show you. <laughs> uh, I think that was it. OK. The Malibu Madison, did I get it wrong? Trying to find Madison Hildebrand. Okay. That's got to be it. Okay. All right. Now I'm losing my mind. Dang it. Talking to him yesterday. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Anyway. All right. There he is. Okay. Madison has 10,000 followers, and he's only following 61 people. Okay, he's a doll, he's on TV, but still, you can follow everybody else. It just, it's not, it's not cool anymore to not follow people. You want to follow people as many as you can. Yeah, it does look a little desperate if you follow more than you follow, or more than follow you, but to just sort of be that exclusive is just, in, in my perception, it's just, it's not communicating that you're awesome or that you're super awesome and that you're nice and that you want to, you know. So um, Madison, you're a doll, but seriously, follow more people. This is about conversation inclusion. It's not about exclusion. So anyway, uh, let's see. Guys, questions, because I think we got the basics here. Did I miss anything? You want Twitter search? You want to follow people? You want interaction? Um, and. Try to give yourself at least 10 to 15 minutes a day to try to find new followers and follow people back and say things. But don't feel like you have to immediately jump on anything that comes across on Twitter. There's nothing urgent there. If it is life or death, they can call you. Yes, there have been instances where people have called for help on Twitter. If you see that, please help. But so, Any questions? No questions. Type faster. <laughs> Sherry, did I miss anything that you think is essential? Because I know we kind of get a little detached from this. Twitter content. Ooh, that's a good question. Twitter content is really hmm, personality-based. I think the question is, what, do you, what is your intention in, in the Twitter space? If you're a real estate agent, you want to meet people. You want to be a personality. You want people to get to know you. And you want to connect with people. So I always recommend that you kind of have a mission statement for yourself and follow that. What is your goal on Twitter? And then content, related things, finding interesting blog posts or news articles about real estate, writing your own blog post about what's going on in your market, um, providing market statistics. Those are all kind of good content. But you want to be human. You want to respond to people. You don't want to just be spewing information out. Um, have fun. Try different things. Try you know, spending a day tweeting on one topic or in, in one way and 
very funny and jokes and quotes and see what gets the most reaction. See what works for you. You kind of test it out. I don't think there's any one specific way to do it, but convey your personality. But remember, safety first, license laws, federal laws, realtor code of ethics, all those things, keep those in mind too. What is the hashtag for? Um, <clears throat> the hashtag is to sort of use as an indicator of a, uh, you know, whether it's an event or something going on. Let me see. What was this one for the moon yesterday? I don't remember. Okay, well, I'll use it as an example here. So I was at the Cobalt Bank or Gen Blue conference. So the hashtag for the conference was Gen Blue. So what that does is I can search with the hashtag Gen Blue, and anybody who used the hashtag Gen Blue will show up in this search. Now I can save it. I can follow people. I can catch up on things I missed. OK? So what you want to do, for instance, but let me, let me just say that this is sort of that Boolean search thing. If you've got the hashtag in there, it's definite. If somebody's put something in there without a hashtag, now when you do it without the hashtag, you will get the hashtag GenBlue and any other GenBlues that might be out there. So I'm not seeing any, but like real estate, you could do a hashtag real estate, or you could do a hash, you know, just straight out real estate. So if you wanted to say hashtag real estate and see if people are talking about real estate, there you go. All right, and this is a good way too to look for people or look for um, news articles to share. And but you can make your own hashtags, and that's what we do. A one a fun one is just saying. It's sort of like if you want to state obvious things. Just, just saying, like, really, did you have to um, say this, do this, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, mine has tweets at top, and yours says timeline. Lisa's asking. Lisa, what are you asking about specifically on that? Are you asking? I'm trying to figure out. She's asking about, I have to find his tweets at top, and hers says timeline. Um, are you using old Twitter? Hmm. Hang on a second. Does the screen look like yours, or do you have the old Twitter? Does yours look like this? She's asking. Go, okay, I will go to Lisa Flint. She wants me to go to hers. Let me go to new Twitter. So I like old Twitter. Old Twitter's comfortable. It's like an old pair of shoes. All right, go to your page. OK, we're going to Lisa's page. OK. Oh, well, we need to follow Lisa. Sure, get on that. All right. So I'm at your page. Mine says tweets. Uh, yours says timeline. Interesting. Okay. All right. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Okay. There's two different ways. As well, when you're looking at it, you're looking at your own tweets. If you're looking at my page, you'd be looking at timeline. I think you're talking about C because right there, that's the profile. So I'm looking at your page. So I'm going to see timeline. Now, I think that if I look at my profile, I'll see it the same way. See there? Timeline. But when I'm actually on, like, my home page, oh, see, it's a timeline there. But now remember, Lisa, I was searching before. I was searching the hashtags. So if you did that, too, I think you'll probably see that as well. So let's see here. Um, let's go for the hip roof. So when I do that, I'm searching for tweets first. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's exactly it. So you see, that was the difference, Lisa, because it was using the results search. So it's taking us to tweets first. Then we can look at tweets with links and then tweets near you. So I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, timeline is what people are saying. So 
Let's go back there for a minute. She's asking, okay, so the time. timeline is what people are saying. So this is the general stream and everything and everyone I follow. At mentions, are those that are talking to me? Um, oh, Shantae, you did not need to share that with him. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it, so the mentions are the people that are talking to you. That's really the most important. And if you start it off with at Madison Malibu, the way Sherry, uh, the Shantae did, sorry, Sherry, um, you are going to end up with everybody that common, in common with Madison Malibu and who, sh who follows Shantae will see that. If you wanted everybody to see something, you'd want to start with any other character than the at. Okay? That's an important thing that a lot of people don't get to understand. And I get really into depth in that in the ebook that's going to be coming to the hip roof pretty soon. And I get into breaking down examples of understanding how all those interactions work with multiple people and who's going to see and who's not going to see. Because it gets super confusing. And see, look, there, this is how she did the thanks first. She just did a thanks first. And then the rest of the message later. So everybody that follows Sherry sees this message. On this message, oh, here's a simple way to explain it. The people that follow Shantae, sold in the city of DC, of those people, the only people that are going to see this message are those that also follow Madison Hildebrand. Okay? So, and here we go. Joe, thank me. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Only our common followers will see that. Again, same thing with Drew. Hi, Drew. Um, and see, look, I go, you got it right, my friend. He oops, looks like I favorited it. That's fine. I'll leave it that way. Thanks for the following conversation um, to Sherry and I. That's great because then, look, we can retweet him. Oh, this is the new retweet. I hate that. Twitter does that, so I'm assuming I retweeted at this point in time. But the way the new retweets are, it's just, anyway, I won't get there. We're getting too far out of our timeline anyway. So, oh no, she's tweeting it. So that's what you got going on, you guys. So um, those are some of the essentials. I think the most basic thing is to understand. Follow hashtags. For instance, if you know there's a conference going on and you can't be there, retext re out. Next, not this week, the following week, Retech South is R-E-T-S-O, Retso. Follow that hashtag because there will be a lot of great information coming out of, this, of the um, sessions. So, you know, yeah, and Maria says, I love to follow conference hashtags. It's great because you learn things. Like, I didn't know that CC Chapman was on a panel with Tech Savvy Agent and go lured yesterday at the ERA event. And that was awesome. I really enjoyed following some of the stuff that was going on. So it's, it's sort of your way to the vicariously through other people at conferences. So hopefully that will cover some of the Twitter basics and beyond. And what I would love is if you guys have specific questions about Twitter, send them to us, thehiproof at gmail.com, and then we can answer them in a webinar or we can answer them on the site. I mean, obviously, that's the whole purpose of the community and the forums. You have access to us all the time. And we're answering your questions all the time. So hopefully, you guys will take a stop by, visit. Um, if anybody's interested who's not a member, we do have um, available shh, super secret seven-day passes. But the price stays $27 a month until the 31st, and then it goes up. So. Thanks, guys, for joining us for the Twitter webinar. And um, yeah, send us some questions, post them. If you have any questions, just reach out and ask us or anybody else. That's the whole point. It's a community, and we share. So thanks, guys, for joining us. And uh, Sherry, thank you for being here. And as usual, I talked too much, and Sherry didn't say enough. And she's brilliant, guys. By the way, if you need a coach, she's a woman. I'm, right, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry is well-rounded. Sherry, and, and I don't mean the physical sense. <laughs> she's been mentally, <laughs> emotionally, and well-trained. <laughs> she's a little wrangly in the physical sense. <laughs> Girl's bony. Um, 
what keeps talking. So, but Sherry, seriously, Sherry is amazing because she really like she she'll listen to tons of coaches. She'll just like collect lots of information, and she's been training for what over twenty years. Since you were like I'm five. Not that old. I'm not, <laughs> not that old. Um, no, I've been training for fifteen years. No, oh, fine. I try to give you five extra years. I mean, I'd pay those five years. extras. I'm holding on to them. I'm still with my youth. <laughs> you can all tell that she's not quite hit 40 yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Embrace yeah, it. So Sherry, forward to it. <laughs> Sherry is um, is our coach in residence for the Hip Roof, and she is going to be bringing her boot camp for real estate to the Hip Roof. So hope you guys can come in and enjoy it. And... Um, Remember, we are here every Sunday night, and usually we're members only, but shh, this is a special event. So this will be posted um, in the forum in the next few hours. And tomorrow, Sherry's going to interview me, and Sherry, I'm going to let you go hot wild with that girlfriend. You put the whole thing together, and you just hit me with whatever you want to. I'll take the fifth if I have to, but that's it. <laughs> maybe what you'll have to do. <laughs> it very well may be. Business, baby, business. All right. So thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you joining us. Sherry, you too. Shantae, I know you're out there somewhere. I thought you were calling in. But have a great night and happy Sunday. i got to go call Tom Ferry. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>